All right, this is second grade module four, lesson five, and we're going to be using tape diagrams largely to solve these word problems. And the idea is it's a three-step process. Number one, we're going to model the problem, and the point of modeling the problem is to help students understand what the problem is about, what it's asking them to do, rather than the traditional thing that students do, which is look at the numbers in the problem and just arbitrarily add them or subtract them or multiply them and just kind of guess as to what they're supposed to do. And that's not what we want. We want students to really understand what's going on. So step one is to use uh, tape diagrams to model that problem. Step two is to solve it, and, and they can use... Um, they can use number bonds, number bonds to do that. They might um, uh, use a, a concept of tape diagrams um, to solve that. We, we talked about that in a previous lesson. They might use mental math in order to, to solve it. They might use the arrow method. The idea is solve it in any way they can because at this point, they're not just guessing. They've modeled the problem. And so now they know exactly um, what they're supposed to do to solve it, and they can use any one of these methods in order to solve it. But then once they've solved it, they got to stop and, and look back and say, well, is our answer reasonable? Do we have a reasonable answer? And we're going to use estimation to do that. So on this problem, it says 38, um, 38 markers are in a bin. Chase added the 43 markers that were on the floor to the bin, now how many markers are in the bin? And so one way to model this using a tape diagram is going to look like what most teachers would know as a part-part whole. We'd say, okay, well, there, here's our 38 markers that were in the bin. Here's the 43 markers that Chase added to the bin. And here is our question mark, and that's the whole. And we can add, and the students. we want students to recognize that this is the classic um, picture, resulting picture, that suggests addition is what we need to do. So, oh, let's do this using the uh, arrow method. So let's start with 30, no, let's do the number bond method, because I think the number bond method makes the most sense on this problem. So let's do 38 plus 43. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a number bond here, and I'm gonna change that to two plus forty one. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I see that thirty eight plus two gives us forty. Now forty plus forty one gives us eighty one. So our answer is eighty one markers. And ideally, I would write that in a complete sentence. Now there is no way that this is the only tape diagram that students could have drawn. They could have drawn something that would look like this. They would say, well, before, um, no, I don't want to use the word before. They might say, well, here's 38 right here, and then here's the 43 that were on the floor, and then over here is where they might do the question mark. So if a student wants to draw the tape diagram that looks like this, um, that's absolutely fine. In fact, I see what I was going to write. I was going to write bin and floor. And there's our labels. And we can draw, students can draw this as their tape diagram as well. In, in either case, the tape diagram is an accurate representation. So on this problem, there are 29 fewer big stickers on the sticker sheet than little stickers. There are 62 little stickers on the sheet. How many big stickers? So this is a classic one where I would, I would do two labels here, little and big. And I would start by giving them each the same length tape diagram. And then I'd go back and read the question. It says there are 29 fewer big stickers than little stickers. So technically, we know that the big tape diagram right here needs to be shorter than the little tape diagram because there's fewer big stickers. 
And so we know that, and I can label this, that there's supposed to be 62 little stickers. And we know that the big is supposed to be fewer by 29. So I'm going to draw in my 29 here. And then the question is, how many bigs? So we can see that in order to solve this, we're going to do 62 minus 29. Was this the only tape diagram that we could have drawn? No way. We could have drawn some other tape diagrams that would have accurately reflected the problem. But here's mine. This is my attempt, and I think I like it. Uh, but everybody doesn't have to draw the exact tape, tape diagram. Now on this one, I can see I'm going to do that that adding one technique. So I'm going to get 63 minus 30 because I know that 62 minus 29 and 63 minus 30 are going to give me the same answers. Um, that was, we used these other tape diagrams to model that. In fact, I should show that to you. So 63 minus 30 is 33, and there's our answer. So if we have any students who are saying, wait a second, how do we know that 62 minus 29 is the same as 63 minus 30? How do we know that? Well, let's draw that tape diagram would look like this. Here's 62, here's 29, and the gap right here is our answer. Now, the tapes are lined up perfectly right here. But if we add one more cube to each tape diagram, they're still lined up perfectly, but now, and the gap, by the way, is still the same. But now, instead of it being 29, it's now 30. And instead of it being 62, it's now 63. And that's our example, and that's how we explain that 62 minus 29 and 63 minus 30 are the same. Some students prefer to just think of it as, well, all I did was I added one here, so I'm going to add one here, and the answer will still be the same. And this is the last slide. It's actually two problems in one. So Hallie has two ribbons. The blue ribbon is 58 centimeters, and the green ribbon is 38 centimeters longer than the blue. How long is the green ribbon? So we're going to model this, and I'm going to label this. We've got blue, and we've got green. And then it says that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by drawing two tapes the exact same length. When I'm using tape diagrams in this kind of style, I usually, almost every single time, start with the two bars being the exact same length, and then I just go back and read the question to edit it and, and make it more accurate. Now, the question does say that the blue ribbon is 58, so that's non-negotiable, so I'm just going to label that 58. But then it says the green ribbon is 38 centimeters longer, so that means I need to add some length here. And how much am I going to add? I'm going to add 38. And now the question is, how long is the green ribbon? That's right here. How long is the green ribbon? Well, the green ribbon is going to be this whole length right here. And we know that this length right here is 58. We know it because we started off with the two tape diagrams being the exact same length. So what we need to do now is do 58 plus 38. And this is a perfect time for a number bond. I'm going to change this to 2 plus 36. So you get 58 plus 2 is 60 plus 36. And that equals 96. So the green ribbon is 96 centimeters long. Now it says Haley uses 67 centimeters of the green ribbon to wrap a present. How much green ribbon is left? So at this point, 
my tape diagram might like look like this. So we've got her green ribbon, and we know that whole green ribbon is 96. But she uses, and I'm going to draw this to make, make it look like, oh, this is gone. She used 67 centimeters of it. And the question is saying, how much is left? So here's my question mark right here. So what are we going to do to figure out this little part right here? We're going to use subtraction. We're going to do 96 minus 67. And I'm going to use that um, little trick where we're going to add 3 to this and add 3 to this. And that's going to give me 99 minus 70, which is the exact same answer as 96 minus 67 because I added the same thing to both each of these numbers. So that gives me 99 minus 70, which a lot of students think is easier. And 97, 99 minus 70 is going to be 29. So how much green ribbon is left over? 99 centimeters. And that is second grade module four, lesson five.